I mean, what kind of rookie maneuver would it be? New sticker. New sticker. I, I want you to think of, oh, dun, dun, ooh. Dun, dun, dun. oh, here's one you don't have yet. This is the clear. Oof. Oof. This is what Barry Bonds used to rub on when his head grew by two times the size and he hit a ball 700 Big yards. old pumpkin head, him and Roger Clemens, right? Ooh. Yeah, I don't know what they were doing. They were just working real hard in the offseason. I, I don't like dislike too many people, but I think Roger Clemens is one of them. Pretty scummy, pretty scummy. Hey, so did I show you what the OWs – I don't know what they did with D1. They gave it to, I, they gave it to like the heavyweight who won, which I get or whatever, but um, in D2 – who did he give it to in D2? He gave it to somebody. I mean, somebody very deserving. I forget who he gave it to in D2, but D1. I gave Gavin Brown D3. It's what, three bars? This? Yeah. Did it's you their, see this? The VIP package? Yeah. Oh, well, no, it's their, their, their best sellers hey, is what, right. it, what it is. It's all their all time best sellers. All the information explains it. I love info it. Right? Got, info and guide. We've got two, we got one of each. Body wash, shower gel, and then um, we got Man, you my, know, my, my right jam, my jam, my jam, right? and my daughter's. My yeah, oldest, she's that's her amazing. Favorite. And then we got all the three bars. We got oatmeal, pep, and original. I've and never tried three, the oatmeal. Three wipes, three wipes. Ah, uh, the Miller boys. We got a little caddy wampa sideways yesterday. Um, I took him to a playground in Chagrin Falls, and Ferdinand mastered the. Uh, what did he get? He was on the uh, monkey bars, monkey bars. Yeah. Uneven, weird monkey bars that go up and down. Even harder. He conquered it. I was awesome. Nice. I think I sent you the video, didn't I? Yes, sir. So Ferdinand conquered the uh, monkey bars at Chagrin Falls. That was, I was really impressed with that because it was all, you know, ziggy zaggy and like uneven. And it was cool. I was really proud of him. He does an awesome job though. So uh, yeah, man. It's uh, awesome. I love it. I love it. I love going out with those guys. We, uh, Hit balls tonight, and I just got out of the woods. I uh, took hitting? off to the land of not tough people. Yeah. Land of rules. A lot of rules. What a lot of rules, <laughs> man. Land of all the rules. Oh, my goodness. So, it's a $100 fine in a lot of those municipalities to not have a mask on outside. Um, uh, we won't that get into is that. Wild. Right? That is wild. <laughs> Oh, goodness. And how long do you think that's going to last? If you're, you're a pretty educated guy. How long do you think that those fines? Wow. Well, yeah, out the mask- there, they'll do whatever. They kind of like they walk in line out there. So, I mean, probably two more years, I'd say they're going to do it out there. Two more. Yeah. I think we'll be done. Our um, state legislature overturned. They got a super majority and they overturned DeWine's. His orders are going to be null and void in like 85, 86 days. 85 or 86 days, I think. So the end of June, we're going to be done with masks, like the mandatory mask. And then um, I think they can still legally try and require businesses to operate with them, but they're going to have a lot of lawsuits on their hands, you know? So um, we'll just see how it goes, you know? But I I would say legally, it's not going to be a mandate statewide anymore after that, you know? For us in Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. But you head head north, it could be a little different, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be... That's crazy though. They it? want that. They they need that. Right. So, but um, you want to talk some OEC? You want to talk a little OEC grade school, let's, junior high? You want to talk about it? Let's talk about it, man. Because it's it, I've been pretty lucky. I got to see you the last what five weeks, right? Lot, but it's not yeah, a lot not of weeks. but not in this setting, right? We got to see it sectionals, right? Home in Oak Harbor. Sectionals, district, state, OAC. Junior high OAC grade schools. Yes, five weeks in a row. Good call. Good call. I mean, and maybe I put- we don't usually get that treat, right? But it's in a different no. setting, right? We got to talk a little bit of districts, state and sectionals, not a whole lot, you know, just a little bit. But it was good at districts, right? Family was there. Both families were there. Got to talk. Pretty cool. We don't get that very often, right? You guys set up <laughs> shop wherever you go. I love it. Like, Who does? Uh, the, St. Mary's. It was uh, crazy because you didn't have any upper. Well, you had one upper weight, but he didn't make it to the sec- concession of the second day. Right. Because he didn't place in the top six. So um, the uppers were still there in between those two sessions at the Moe's across the street. They set up shop. And I was like, why, why don't you guys just go back to Sandusky? What are you doing here? It's Sunday afternoon. You're like, this is what we do. We hang was it, around. Was it Drew and Ed? Or was Ju- was Julie Drew, there? Ed, Julie. 
and Corey. Our guy, <laughs> hey, Mr. Sticker himself. <laughs> I put stickers everywhere. I have to pay for those, Corey. I was like, dude, this cost me like 50 cents a sticker. What are you doing, man? And he was like, ah. Anyhow, <sighs> yeah, that sound accurate. Was that pretty accurate? Of, uh, right. Yes. Trail? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so anyhow, you guys. They were there, and um, all the O'Carver people went over with us. One of the Eastwood guys is an old O'Carver guy, Rick Hasselbart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he works he was for at, you guys. He's yeah, at OAC cool. State, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Rick. Rick's a good dude. Right. Um, yes. He's got two yes. twin sons that are pretty tough. Yeah. One of them right. qualified for state. So, and they're sophomores, and they're big guys. Yeah, so I was going to say they're young, Look out. Too. They're, they're going to have some uh, – those guys, are they're on the upswing, right? Right. I, one guy's probably going to be a little – probably got a bad taste in his mouth after the state tournament. But I think what I found out – Here's what I found out about uh, D3. If you get in those top three weights, you can win. You can rip off a run and, and win the state tournament with little to no state experience. You know, a lot of the guys are athletes. And, you know, obviously 195, I was a big guru on 195 D3 this year in mm-hmm. Ohio. Kind of like I was a big guru on 145 in Division Two in 2010 when Ian Miller won. And, you know, I become a guru on the weights where my nephews are, right? I do a lot of research. I go 35, 40 deep in a lot of those weights, man. Yeah. I remember you texting earlier this year about certain guys. And I was like, yeah, I, I have like, no uh, clue who you're talking about. You no. Know? Yeah. I was like, Oh, check this guy out. Check that guy out. And I, and I do a lot of chatting with Paul Bergman and George and just try and keep those guys in the loop because with Wyatt, at least um, with Wyatt Miller, I, you do scouting with him, but they don't tell him, <laughs> they don't tell him what the plan is. He doesn't need to know. No, right? they don't need to know. So but for Owen, I think it's, it's different. It's, it, you can tell Owen what's coming, what's, you know, he's, but he, you know, he's got, he's got another level or two to jump before he, he gets obviously where he needs to be, but, but yeah. He jumped I mean, I levels, just, man. He's yeah. Just... No, he jumped levels this year. Uh, of course. Um, our guy, Donnie, we might run into our guy, Donnie tonight. Donnie right? might. We're working on getting him jumping on here. Yeah. He, uh, he caught the instigator of the interview. Oh, he got me. He got me good. That was good. He, the funny thing, Wags was calling him out all week. He's like, you won't get him. And Donnie's like, I'm going to get him. The instigator, like all weekend. Yeah. Before you got there, he's, he's calling a shot. I mean, dude, I'll talk to anyone. You know, that. no, I know, but you know, some people want, they say, yeah, I want to interview Zeb and don't do it. But you know, obviously we know Donnie's another, another breed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then running into Josh and guy uh, this weekend, you know, obviously Josh, we do the show for Josh with Josh. Check out this um, man. See, that's what he did for us. This- yeah, I have one. I have one. I have one. I have yeah. one. I have one. Got the bag. Did you know I have one? I figured you did. I of course. You. But yeah. I didn't get it from Josh. I can't tell you who I got it from. Can't tell you what guy in Perkins Township can, gave it I to can, me. I can, I can guess one of two people, but go on. I won't tell you who the 922 tour was that gave it to me, all right? <laughs> Part-time I won't. I promise. I won't mention any names. But running into all those people, getting to see all those people this weekend, you know, the five last five weekends with you and just, you know, your family. And obviously, you know, it's just great to talk to you guys and see you guys. But, you know, a lot of the times in this like super stressful setting where we're like, you know, you're, right, right. <laughs> you're getting screamed at by angry parents. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to interview as many people as possible. Well, it's just all cr- it comes to a head quick, yeah, right? You're, you're at the so finals, quick. we gotta yeah. get the sheets, get you the right setup. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just goes so quick. Yeah. I'm trying to like do things the whole time, and you know, that's when you when I come in and do something, you know, like when I go work, that you know, like um, iron sharpens iron. I work for this guy, Steve, Steve mm-hmm. from Iron, Steve Farrell, really good guy out of Iowa, right? He's a, he's a little different, I'm not gonna lie to you, but he's, he's a BA class. guy, he's a BA yeah, guy, he's a BA guy, but real, real different guy. Um, great guy in person, not a fun person to text with great guy in person. Okay. Um, a lot like, uh, Willie Saylor, hate Willie Saylor, um, through text. Cause he doesn't respond a lot, <laughs> but really mm. enjoy him in person. You know what I mean? If, if that makes any sense to you. Right. And so many of these interactions, um, are online anymore. You know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of people are really good at this. Mm-hmm. You know, they're good at zooming. And not, my not, thing is like, this. I like being in front of Moran. Mm-hmm. I like being in front of Moran and, and Hey, Moran, this isn't Russia. Right. This isn't Russia. This is the United States of America. You got to do some of the stuff by our rules. And 
I don't know if you got to watch that interview with Moran, but I like, got to we see really got I into did. it was good. The organized crime aspect of of Russia that nobody wants to talk about. He and did you hear him? He was like, "Hey, I figured it out. I I could go and coach in the United States of America. I could go compete and then coach." Right? He pre- mm-hmm. probably didn't really wasn't really thinking about the coaching part. Is my guess. My my thought is he probably thought he could come here and be an Olympian for the United States of America, and then lo and behold, the coaching thing opened up because they really jacked him around with the U.S. State Department, really jacked him around with his citizenship. And he didn't get it till the 11th hour. And it was like he was kind of past his prime at that point. And I think there was so much stress put on getting the citizenship that it almost took precedent over the training and everything else, if that makes sense. Huge added stressor, right? Dude, he beat everybody in the weight. He beat everybody in the way he beat. Um, he did like match simulations with Kenny Monday and, and, and put it on him. I was like, oh, what? Hmm. He went hard with Kenny Monday and, and, you know, got the better of Kenny Monday. He didn't say like beat Kenny Monday up or anything. It was, but yeah, we were at the right US OTC or wherever they were at training camp or And so him and Kenny Monday, like were brawling and dude, Kenny Monday was not on the way backside in 2000. 98 97 98 99 2000. it wasn't like he was like some dude who was just doing it he, right he was still elite mm-hmm. and that's what's crazy about it and he you know towns and saunders he got the best of town and towns and saunders the only guy he said he never beat was Dolph. really he never wrestled, he never wrestled wow. Dolph. because i i like really wanted to try and get something like that going and just hearing Dolph's perspective but he said he was a training partner for dave schultz and just a lot of really cool stuff. And, you know, him and De- Dennis Sargouche, world champ, who, and he was bronze in the Olympics to uh, Burroughs in, in 2012. Sargouche, you know, multiple time world champion. And that was the, he, Dennis Sargouche was the first real, oh, Jordan Burroughs has arrived win internationally, beat him in the quarterfinals of the 2011 Worlds, where Bader was losing his mind because Sargouche was pulling and he ripped. Uh, Bro is a singlet. Mm-hmm. So him and him and uh, Dennis Sargusha are from the same. They're from the same region in Russia. Akrabazia. I probably butchered it, but he's super pumped to talk about it. But you know, hearing the racketeering part of it and all the stuff that that goes into and like what what goes on in Russia and just our, so different our, our our youth system and our right. youth competition because that was the big thing. You know, they don't do anything like the OEC there. Right. Did you know it's, that? Right. And he, he kind of instilled that in Carson, right? He, yeah. Carson was going to compete as a, he competed at the district in eighth grade. Um, and if something happened, um, well, Carson he, he, never wrestled in a district tournament until his junior year. Well, he competed. In I don't think OEC. he ever wrestled in a sectional tournament. He competed in OEC year. district his eighth grade year. And I don't know, rumor what was, I'm saying about so. Carson right. is Carson is such a mutant. Carson yeah. Carson oh, he's was a such a self. I think he hurts himself because he's so explosive. If that, yeah. if you can believe, I, I, I think but that's a thing. Speaking of mutant, I think we have someone joining us here. Oh, we got a mutant joining us. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> can you hear us? He's you connected. Gotta to the... Turn it. Flip you gotta it. turn it. <laughs> I can hear Go you. Landscape. landscape. Go landscape. On your... <laughs> There it is. Dude, it almost looked like he did a flip. He like did. Watch out. Whoa. Yeah. Donnie, what's up, yeah. brother? What's going on? <laughs> whoa, whoa. You guys, the audio is breaking up. Can you hear oh, us? We are. We, do we sound like the robotic warlock? Yeah. Now you do. Yeah. Yes. Sir Chief Donald Chance. What is up? Yes. <laughs> Look not much background. look at the background it's awesome. I, <laughs> I love it That's i was expecting the stash or something com- man no 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 the cavelli center that's right. what we're doing right. state uh, tournament right state tournament is it is it is it tournament or tournament yeah what do you Smith. want it to be what do you want it to be states or state state or state is it that, states or state or that tournament? Is kind of a preposterous argument to me I think it's I think it's the state tournament in my opinion. I think right. it's state tournament all day. Right. Um yeah, I'll go state tournament. I, I don't do the I don't do the Ohio River Valley states, but you know what? It's actually correct because it is it's three divisions in Ohio. So it is technically 
it is state championship state tournament. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it is like three three state tournaments, so it's plural. That's actually correct. Yeah, because if if you we refer to the district tournament as districts, yeah, it's only one one tournament. <laughs> but there's twelve of them. Well, I understand, but we're only going to one one yeah. tournament. You're right. Tor- it was tournament. sectionals, district, state. You're right. Tournament. I th- you know what? As much as I uh, don't like the people who say states, I think they might have us. Uh, you're probably right. I'll I think agree. They're actually, grammatically correct. Jared. Jared. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I'm a state guy, but I'm a state yeah. guy all the way. Yeah. I mean, no question. State. I'm going state. So we're we're talking about mutants before you jump down here, Donnie. Mutants. And, uh, mutants. Mutants. Yes, correct. Yeah. Did you see any uh, mutant wrestlers this okay. past weekend, or or any anyone uh, you see? Uh, yeah, I saw him two weekends in a row. <laughs> Can I guess? Can I guess? Yes, I I, you're, I know you you it's know they're going to be. It's either going to be Feister or Gray Burnett. It, it's uh, well, I'm going to go with uh, Feister because he's the only six foot, hundred and seventy pound sixth grader that looks like most 20 year old men walk in the street how about when he throws double grapevines in like he pounces on it so quick and i didn't have either one of his finals but i can see him across the way and i obviously have all the video of it how quick he like takes the double double grapevines on top to pin someone is it's crazy yeah that's uh he's a specimen that's that's a whole different level of uh, the kid there i i i you know, he wrestled one of our kids a couple of years ago when they were younger and he was huge when he was in third or fourth grade or whenever it was, he beat the youngest, the youngest gross boy in the semifinals or something like that in 2018 or 2017. And he was, he was a monster then. And I'm just thinking that I see this kid at Cedar point in December. I miss, yeah. I remember you were going, you got to watch these guys. I'm like, Holy cow, this kid steps on the scale. And I'm like, you're a full grown man. And uh, I'm thinking, is this a mistake? And no, he's sixth grade. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh. And then obviously he, uh, one, one point scored on him at the junior high tournament. Wow. Two weekends ago, one point. Yeah. I think he went past 20 eight, seconds in grade school. Right. I think it was all. Uh, no, I, I, unfortunately I only got to watch one of his matches and it, um, it was the finals match and it, it, it ended pretty quick. Right. Yeah. They're all quick. It, it was yeah. about as it was as quick as my competitive wrestling career. <laughs> what what about what other sightings do you have at Cedar Point? Uh oh man. Um obviously uh I think that is the first time I saw the, the girl from Steubenville. Forgive me, I don't Talia, know her last Talia name. Talia Guntram. Oh my gosh. And she Real wrestled deal. she wrestled Gray Burnett in the finals match there and pushed him. And uh, you know in all honesty, you don't see that kid get pushed very often. And, um, he did a a couple of times this past weekend. That's just a testament of how talented some of these kids are, you know, because I, I, to me, the bar, he sets the bar. And if, if they're competing with him, man, there's a lot of good kids and that's going to be exciting for us in a couple of years down the road. When these kids get into high school, there's going to be some good wrestling to watch. I, I think even better than what we've witnessed now. I was hoping for the sighting of, of Zabby in, in the corner. That's what I was hoping well, for. Well, I did that too. So, you know, I'm probably, uh, Zeb's probably going to get me back two times you know, full because I, I caught him dripping ketchup down his lip, eating a corn dog or whatever it was. And then I, then I reversed the roles and interviewed him uh, on the spot. You know, I didn't give him a chance to escape or anything. And um, by the way, that was, uh, that was my first interview I'd ever given Zeb. So I hope I was up to your standards. It was great. I thought everybody else seemed to think it was great. My brother Ferd called me. Do you guys want to know what my brother Ferd called and told me? What did he say? <laughs> Jared, I don't know. You might have to chop this out. Do you want me to really say Do what it. my brother? Do it. He called and he said, Hey Zeb, I saw your interview and you cried like a bitch. <laughs> Johnny tends to do that. He's a nice guy. Johnny said, tends to do that. My brother Ferd is just, he is just a solid dude, man. Just one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. Oh, man. He'd, he'd, uh, kick you in the teeth if you needed a hand or what. I don't know, man. He, he's not a bad guy. He just, 
not a nice guy. Well, so, he, he's cut. He's cut from a different cloth, man. Oh yeah, he's a different. He's a different one. That Ferdinand. And then my son's like totally different. My son's like this super nice boy. You know, Ferdinand, my boy, is like, oh hey dad, and he wants to help everybody. And then, then his, my brother Ferd is uh, not like that. He's the so, oldest, right? Yeah, that- yeah. He, so he's ten years older than me. And then, um, it's funny. Him and Eric Burnett used to go to uh, Milkovich camps together. Oh wow! And that's how we know they're Burnett's because they were in eighth grade. Milkovich camp together at uh, Baldwin Wallace. And then they became counselors together. And then Eric is 10 years older than Scotty Burnett and Ferd's 10 years older than me. So that's the, the, the connection. And we used to go to the state tournament to their, uh, after, after the state tournaments, we would go to the Burnett's and Ron would be, Ron Burnett would be smoking cigarettes, critiquing Eric. Eric would go out for a run. After we won the state. <laughs> It was wild. It was wild. So you knew the yeah. Burnett's way back when then. We've known the Burnett's for, right. I mean, almost 40 years now. Yeah. And, and, and so Ferd would have been in eighth grade in 1982. So next year it'll be 40 years. We've wow. known the Burnett's. Wow. We've got a great relationship with the Burnett's. Obviously, we've known them forever. I vacationed with Scotty in the summers and, and then worked with the camp system from 99 to about 2016 is when I stopped plunging toilets and mopping that. <laughs> so no, yeah. but that that interview, Donnie, man, that was uh that was uh, the talk of the the tournament behind the scenes. I was like, holy cow, it's going on 25 minutes. You were counting the counting the minutes. Well, so he's gonna run out of battery. <laughs> Hope it's on Zeb's phone. We thought you did <laughs> and it wouldn't record. And listen, well, I, it was awesome. It was good. Great job. Great really job good. for you, Donnie. Well, thank work, you. Man. It was an honor, honor, though. I mean, you're you're the guy that uh, I think is the best in the business with that. I mean, you just think of all you've done over the last, you know, few years. I mean, you're the one man traveling gypsy that's captured some of the coolest moments in, in wrestling. I I, I got to give it to you. I don't know how one man could, could be in so many places at one time. Obviously, you told us. I mean, you didn't sleep much. You, you drove like a bat out of hell or you flew. But just to be, you know, you're a lucky guy, man, just to, to be in those places and to interview the, the dudes you've interviewed, man, just like the, the elite wrestlers of, you know, our era is, man, that's the coolest thing. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Ray Brinzer interview? No. Is it outside or is it the restaurant? You've had him a couple times, right? Outside. There's a couple. Yeah, I did a couple because I started uh, like talking to him and he would stop on the turnpike because he was working in Wisconsin and they live in New York city. Um, Ray Brinzer is a different guy, different cat. <laughs> oh man. He's one of the first interviews I ever did. Like one of the first five interviews ever. So he was, uh, Oklahoma state. Then he transferred to Iowa when he was under Gable and, He's North Allegheny. He's from Pittsburgh. And he's just this like anomaly of a human. Like a you want to talk about a gypsy? Ray Brinzer's a gypsy. But but a good dude. Just odd. Just a different cat. Yeah, you got to check that out. Ray Brinzer. Ray Brinzer's Go High Outcast uh, uh, interview. He'll be in a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> so it's worth it. Yeah. It's good. It, it's worth it. It's it's worth the the, the price of, of nothing. <laughs> What it'll cost you? Nothing. So, yeah, but Donnie, ooh, I got this new uh, charger. You guys seen these chargers? They got these, like, magnetic chargers. They stick uh, for, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, co- My head coach, Jesse's got one. Jesse Gross. Pretty cool. What are they? It's pretty cool. It's just like a magnetic charger. It sticks to my phone. But I had to get a special case that had the magnet in it. Oh, yeah, like you got you to buy the case for go the charger. Through it. You just yeah, drop it on there. it's pretty cool. I can actually like hang it on the wall if I want to. It'll hold it. Donnie, you're you're, you're vertical <laughs> on us, brother. I don't know what to have here. I'm having some technical difficulties. Let me see here. How's this? There oh, you there go. That's us. That's us, big dog. D. Hey, D. Hey, D. Hey, D. Hey, D. Hey, D. Now, now you're, you're now sideways, sideways again. again. What's that? You're sideways. I'm sideways again. What's going on here? My vertical again? Yeah, you can leave it there. It's all good. Just leave okay. it vertical. We're good. Well, I had to. Uh, let me see here. There it is. Oh, 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 there it is. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this. 
The Traveling Road <laughs> Show, boys. There we go. And he's like, he's hitting a barrel roll, a gator roll on us. I don't. Oh, yes. I just hit a, a cement mixer. <laughs> yes. A cement <laughs> mixer. Twisted my chin off. Uh, okay, besides Gray Burnett, besides uh, Feister, did one of the Feisters take third? One of the Feisters yeah. got beat. The younger, um, smaller yeah, one. Yeah, the right? younger one. I, I don't think yeah. he, he's he quite had a close the... semi match, though. They had a close with the Love, I think Jace Love. They had close semis. Uh, Dol- Dolph's kid is a, is a stud. He, I think he was the junior high. Incredible. AJ Dolph's yeah. an incredible athlete. What other sports did he do? Soccer or what's he do? Oh, it's football. He football. said he runs. Brian told me, not the kid. Brian, his dad, told me that AJ runs a four seven forty in eighth grade. <laughs> now, what school will he go to? Seth? Okay, that was the big. That's the the point of contention and the big. Nobody knows, and the kid doesn't know, and you know, it's it's um nobody knows. So it sounds like it's going to be North Canton Hoover. He was wrestling for Perry and represented by Perry. Sure, sure. Bernie was in the seat. With Brian, and then Brian Dolph is coaching at Walsh Jesuit. And then there was one other one they threw in there that was like, because Brian was a state, Brian Dolph was third in the state for Hoover, for North Canton Hoover. So Perry, North Canton Hoover, Walsh Jesuit. I want to say there was another one. It was weird. It was like Coventry or it wasn't Coventry, but it was something like that. I was like, what? John McGee, Akron Coventry. It, Akron Coventry is not the same Akron Coventry. I'm just going to put it out there. Oh, I know. Different. Is he is he, is he going uh, next year? Is he held back? Be held back uh, I think he's going. I think he's going. I think Brian is. I think he's going. I don't think he's doing that. But I, I can't speak for him. But right. he is so good. AJ Dolph is really good. And then the Miller twins, the West Shore brother, yeah. the, their yeah. brothers, Miller twins, their dad's uh, GT. Mm hmm. Uh, they're really good. One of them didn't win though. Mm-hmm. And then he beat Dolph. One of the brothers beat Dolph at uh, beat AJ Dolph at the state duels. Man, the state duels was Dude, a really yes. good event. <laughs> yeah, it's now crazy because we- they th- put on lying less pressure, right? So there's a, some of the wrestling's crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, rematch there. A couple of rematches I saw there were so Dolph did not have a rematch. What was a really good rematch that I saw? I couldn't think of it. I don't know if I had it on my mat or not, but it was like a bananas rematch. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Phoenix Contos and Driscoll. Hmm. It was a barn burner up a weight. They were up a weight, and Phoenix Contos lost in overtime to Cooper Driscoll, a West Shore. And then Contos, Phoenix Contos is, I think, a Burnett trained. And then... Barn burner up at 126 goes to overtime. Driscoll wins. They wrestle in the state finals at 120 down a weight. Phoenix Contos does a crazy barnyard rolls through and gets him for two and two. Right off the rip, because, right? Was it yeah, right the yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome match though. And we both shot that. Both Rosine and I shot that. And I'd like to hear Rosine to, if he mentioned that because it was a crazy, the match was crazy in the, I haven't got to watch his stuff at the yet. duels. It was crazy. I'm kind of excited. It was a great match. It was one of the better matches I've seen in junior high this year because they're obviously both pretty high level kids. And Contos was up way up. He was like way up. He only weighed like 115 and he wrestled 126 because that was Jeez. what Broxville needed or whatever because he jumped on a team. Because you were allowed to have four non community guys. Yeah, you can have four or four extras. And you can add as many as you want, but only four can score. So yeah, it kind of yes. promotes yeah. the studs jumping on a team. So that was a well, great one, rematch, and Phoenix Contos won. Obviously, I've got some connection with with uh, this young man's dad, but uh, Cohen Rear, dude, Cohen Rear's talk a about hammer. Me? Yeah, he's Cohen Rear's a hammer. He didn't. He he didn't. He didn't give up a point. The whole so, tournament. So during COVID. When they, nobody could have contact with anyone unless you had a wrestling room on your property, Cohen Rear went and did the six foot apart, no contact workouts. He was Eric Burnett's dummy. Yep. Eric Burnett couldn't even touch him, right? Couldn't even like show con. It was all with like a broomstick, and he Co- Cohen Rear went to every one of those things, and he was Eric Burnett's six foot dummy. So think about that. I want you to think about that. When a lot of kids 
were just just packing it in, man. And everybody was bummed out and we couldn't do anything. Colin Rear's dad was driving him. I don't even know where they were doing a lot of those. I know Eric, uh, Scotty was doing his at the Hive. Eric might have been doing his in different various wrestling rooms. Might have been at the Artie's at the Doghouse, but I'm not even sure where it was. Somewhere. I, there was, um, the one place I didn't recognize. I mean, I didn't recognize the color of mats. I don't know. It was Would they have maybe been at Piecrafts? It could have been, but he was at all of them. Yeah, Owen Rear was at every single one of those. It's, I think, it's, they're, think about that. They're committed, man. They're committed. Dude, that's so just his, the point. They're committed. It, it, they want to win. Yep. yep. And uh, he, he, he'll, he'll play baseball in the summer, so he takes a break. Um, his grandpa, uh, I worked, was one of my bosses for about four years, so I'm pretty close to that family. So it's pretty cool, you know, to see what he's done so far. I mean – that's Logan and Hunter Stieber stuff we're talking about there to win Tulsa, yeah. to win Reno, to win Super 32s, to to win, you know, not, not just the OEC state tournament, but every major national tournament that's going right now. That kid has went to and he's won. He's wins on his down year, too. I mean, you know what I mean? It's up your down year. When he's, he's, the low, he when he's the low end of the great, uh, when he's the younger kid. And when you win that, I mean, that's that, – yeah, he wins he's, everything. <laughs> he's really good, dude. Um, right. Talking to Patty. Patty was there two weeks ago. Gallagher, Padre. Do you guys realize somebody scored? What, no, I, I've never seen anybody score on that kid. They've not. He has not given up a defense, like a, a point defensively. Like, are you saying it's all rear? kickouts? Rear? Yeah, all, all kickouts or mm. or I've never seen the kid get taken down. I've ne- five years now. I've never he's seen him really give a point good. up. That's amazing. He's really good. Really good. And it, like talking to Patty Gallagher, he never won. He won one OEC title. I think he beat Justin Mays in the finals. He did. He's great. Yeah. And he won. He won Tulsa twice. He won all the other national level events multiple times. He never won the OEC, but once. That's a testament of how tough that tournament is. Yeah. When Patty's telling me that Patty's a no nonsense dude, man. You know what I mean? Like he's a, he's a guy, a few words. Very, very nice few guy. Words. Very, very few words. But when he told me that, that, that blew my mind because I didn't know he won all the other stuff. I, I thought he might have been like a, a local anomaly. Maybe he went to like the junior high power aid or the junior iron man when they had that, you know, because a lot of guys like to stick local. I like that. I like that local sticking around local. I, you can do that in Ohio and, and Western PA and, and do pretty well, I think. And when he told me that, I was like, oh, he only won the OEC one time. That was that blew my mind. He said it was a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. A lot of pressure. He said he felt a lot of pressure for that event every year. And that was pretty awesome. The other thing I like about the OEC is you get to see every club, every club. You get to see. I saw Adam DeSabato said what's up to him. Obviously, Moran interviewed him. I see Spatola. You guys realize Spatola's club is actually in uh, in Kentucky. Sure. Like the physical location because it's cheaper and he's smart. So he does it down there. He, I think his tournament's coming up this weekend. It, yeah, it's, is it, it is. It's in Covington, isn't it? I, Covington, I believe so. Kentucky? Yeah. I mean, which, yeah. Well, he used to do it at the University yep. of Cincinnati, but obviously you just can't it's do bounced that. bounced around a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So he's done but, that but way. But his club's <laughs> there. And then I saw Jermaine Lindsay was there. All these different clubs, man. I love it. I love seeing all the different clubs. I love seeing, obviously, there's Burnett Trains in the West Shores. You got all these different clubs. You got uh, Warner, Warner Elite. Right. I mean, they it, won the it all-star. is awesome they won the all-star. to see. Yeah. You know, yeah. Warner, uh, uh, what do you call it? Just won the NCAA title again. Tyler, yeah. Tyler Warner won yeah. a second NCAA title and was, at, was a special guest at the tournament two weeks ago. And yep. coaching kids. I just, I love to see it, man. I love when guys come back and give back. And that guy's a, he's a freak mutant, Tyler Warner. And they got some tough kids. Oh, they Warner do. Elite's they got do. some tough kids, man. Well, Claymont, I think Claymont will, will be back w- uh, to be a force here again. Well, soon, he's coaching at, at point he coaching at? He's a head coach. Um, His dad about. told me the name of the uh, school. It's not Indian Valley, I've is never it? Never heard. I'd never no, Oh, it's Drew Canaton. Canaton Valley. Right. Connaughton Valley. Big Connaughton money. Connaughton big, Valley. Yes. big money. 
real small school, right? Yeah, yeah it's not must, I, was, was a, it was it was a bizarre thing when they Donnie did. knows, yeah. man. Donnie's like not, yeah, Connaughton Connaughton Valley, Valley. Yeah, Donnie's like my grandma, man. He knows yeah, everybody's it's, uh, not, relation. That's right. <laughs> Every double state first, route. Double first cousins. What color cars they got? What their favorite <laughs> Sunday meals are? Trust me, you need the info. Call me up. I will. Yeah. I'll do my best to get you accuracy, Donnie. He's need you, to, talking to you talk about people who never won the OAC. It correct me if I'm wrong, Jared, but I don't think Nathan Tomasello ever won it either. Uh, that's that, that Ben Darmstadt, a... Nathan Tomasello, Mick Burnett, Nate Burnett. None of these guys ever won it. Crazy, yeah. And like I said in our interview, my, Ian Miller is the only one of us that's ever won. Well, they didn't have it for all of us, but I don't think Wyatt ever placed in it. I think my nephew Owen placed in one grade school division one time. Bodie's never placed in it. So it is obviously just but some kids just, just progress and, different. You know what I mean? Well, no, and that's <laughs> no, yeah, I'm all right with that. Like, I, I think that that is, I think you're hungry. I think you're hungry a little bit. I think that well, here, here's the first thing. Let's just get this out of the way. I didn't see any college coaches there beside the Baldwin Wallace guy and he's coaching his kids. I didn't see Coach any recruiters kids, yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Right. On. You know what I mean, like, right I, I, I think that that is what is lost with a lot of people with their mentality. Mm-hmm. And they get a little twisted and dialed in weird. Right. Um, there's a lot to be said for not losing your mind at a, a youth event. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to find out real soon about hopefully not losing your mind at a youth, youth event. So Could be we'll coming see up. if uh, I'm a hypocrite or Easier not. said than done. Easier said than done, right? But. I can tell you at the state tournament this year, I lost my mind in the semifinals and it was counterproductive and it was stupid and I shouldn't have done that. So, uh, yeah, I did. I missed that. But you, yeah. you said, it. I didn't watch the whole thing, but sometimes yeah. you just get caught up in it, right? The, the emotions kind of take yeah. over. Yeah. And... and then once again, as Donnie knows, and you guys know, you know, why it, you know, why it's at a tough road, man. And, and for, him to be mauling someone in the state semifinals by 10 points. And then they call him for stalling as he's murdering some guy. I just don't get that. I don't get that. I, I had that with Derek gross. I mean, you guys both watched Derek gross. That kid had a motor that he didn't stop. And Ron Neeson of all people, we were a win. It was again, it was against Logan Barton of all people, Jared. He, he was, he was beating him 14 to three and still taking shots or something like that. Neeson hit him for stalling. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I like Ron yeah, Neeson, I, too. I, 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 I go way back with Ron Neeson. He's from Lakota. I coached at Lakota. I taught at Lakota. I, I have a great relationship with Ron Neeson. Oh, I love Ron to death. Ron, yeah. I love him to death. I mean, uh, he, he's, in, he's in my officials association, and um, I have a great respect for him because, obviously, he's been refing as long as I've been involved with wrestling. But a cool, a cool story about Neeson, um, and I guarantee he's the only ref in the state of Ohio uh that um that uh this this is this is the honest truth so waterloo over in that water they've had three state champions in school okay so they take a picture of their picture for the for the kids on the wall is the ref holding his arm up in the air after he won the state championship guess who the referee is in every one of those pictures for all three of their state champions at Atwater Waterloo, Ron Neeson. I love it. True story. Donnie that's knows. That's in Portage County. That's yes, in Portage yes. County. We, we, go, we, we went to a tournament over there at the beginning of the season. Um, Josh Allen was their first ever state champion, which was in uh, the winter of 96, would have been uh, Sir, Sir Jared Upfer's uh, freshman year, first ever state title. Um, Josh Allen, he actually beat Joey Collins from New London in the semis four to three. Joey ended up taking fifth. Josh Allen won state that year. And then J.J. Divin was uh, their second state champ. Oh, I remember that name, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it was at 138. It was the year Jesse was a junior in high school. So uh, one of the Guerrero twins was in that weight class down mm-hmm. at state. Mm-hmm. And then um, – uh, their most uh, recent one was, I want to say, like two or three years ago, the kid come out of nowhere in one state and didn't even qualify as a senior the next year. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the fun fact of the day for the Portage County people over in Randolph and Atwater. Ron Neeson, 
if you ever, if your kid is ever in a state championship from Waterloo, you better hope Nice is rough in the match because you're going to win it. You're going to win the damn thing. Dude, that's he's nuts too. Listen, that guy was playing competitive rugby yes. up until like four or five years ago. And I think he it was less than that. It was like out. three, two or three. I was like, what are you doing? Right. Stop it. <laughs> he, he's, he's got, got a farm. Still, well, he's still got a farm over by Lakota that he yeah. goes and tends to. And I mean, he's in right. Finley, lives in Finley. He's got a house up on the lake. So, I mean, the guy is, he's all over the damn place. You know what I like about him? Look, look at this, Donnie. Donnie, look what I have. Speaking of which, remember, did you get one of those? What does it say? The Van Buren. Uh, no, the Van Buren. No, we never went. Oh, you got, yeah. They gave you those mugs. For yeah, those. he's the director up there. Yeah. What, they get, listen, uh, him and uh, Oak say, Harbor Grant Slaughter. Let's say about Ron. Let's just say, like, us talking about Ron and, and, and shortcomings he's had or mistakes he's made, Ron will own it. Ron will own it. Oh, I yeah. think that Ron, Ron, I think you got to be a different guy to be an official right? hundred percent. You got to be like very obviously rule driven. You got to be very, I think a lot of them are super regimented people. They're obviously all very type a, um, and I think that law enforcement officers do pretty well in officiating. Right. Sure. And I think that a lot of the sales guys do a really good job. I know that in Taglianata, that's who he does. Kent and Taglianata. They do sales. I think uh, Linich does sales. Mm-hmm. I think Sornchinsky does sales. Yep. yep. And yeah, I mean, those are just three of the best officials off the top of my head. Well, it gives you the you know the flexibility too. Yeah, I think you get the, the uh, and, and those are D one guys, right? They're mm-hmm. D one college guys. So um, the dude from North Carolina, Angel, I think is the best though. I think a lot of officials agree. Angel's really right? good. Have that you guys is, ever seen yeah. Angel? Yeah. Angel, and I like, think a lot of the officials agree on that too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You could ask Kevin Lynn and she would say that angel is pretty good. Um, I think Kevin was on that mat with, uh, Boo Llewellyn. Yeah. And, he was. Uh, yep. and Kyle. Kyle. Yep. And they tried to count it off. Kevin, t- I think Kevin said, I, okay, we're just going to run it and we're going to count it off. He did. And the head guy was like, Nope. Tim the Shields. Table guy. Tim nope. Shields. Yeah. Yep. And, the, and everyone at the table looked like they were comatose, looked like they were uh, just got off the uh, the senior golf challenge or whatever. They all looked old and just comatose and totally, totally kicked the tires on that deal yeah. there. And I think Kevin tried to do the right thing. I think Kevin's a great official. And I think Kevin and whoever he works with, him and Sornchinsky work together, I think, as much as they can. Mm-hmm. And I think they tried to do that. They tried to count that off and they, they someone went over their head. Shields went over their head. You're right. They did. And exactly they do it all right. the time. Dude, they do that all the time. They do that all the time. You guys know exactly. They do that all the time. They count off seconds all the time. Well, what they made can't it use worse a device, was- right? You can, they couldn't use a device. That was the issue, right? Yeah. No, but how does every other supporting, every sporting league out there does that? Because they, I mean, basketball especially, they always go to the clock to make sure that they – have the for a stop and make sure they have the correct amount of time they go back to the monitor and look and nice. the, the, what made it worse a thousand times worse is the director of officiating getting on there and giving some I, I don't know uh jared your daughters could have probably given a better explanation than what he did i mean the guy had a smirk on his face so he knew it was like uh he was you know talking out of his uh suit to, and it, it just made matters worse and it, it made it look that much terrible I hope Heil comes back next year. Dad. I like Heil. I like the Hiles. I like all of them. I think they're good people. I, I like the dad. Um, I like Logan at uh, Cleveland State, obviously, Dean. And, yeah, man, he – he, whew. And then he lost to Fine Silver from Duke in the uh, round of 16. And then Fine Silver lost to, to Ian's guy from Appalachian State, Milner, in the round of 12. And then Ian's got the gig, you know. So it is, uh, it sucks, but I think because Milner beat Heil in the so- SoCon finals, Southern Conference finals, which is what App State and Campbell are in. And I think you got to give Heil a really good shot 
against Milner because it's I, I think Milner beat him three times this year. I, it's really hard to beat a guy a fourth time in a fourth really time. short season too. Yeah, yeah I sure. know. So it would have been the sure. third time they wrestled, I believe, because in the duel, the duel, the SoCon finals, and then it would have been round of twelve blood round. But Fine Silver knocked him off, and then Milner. This Milner guy's got a freaking gas tank, man. You guys got to watch this Milner guy. This one forty nine. He took eighth for uh, App State. Got a family, has a, a wife and kid. Dude's Jesus. got a freaking motor. He's fun to watch, and he's a tall, skinny dude. I think his shoes about a fifteen. I'm not exaggerating. Oh my god! When you when you see uh, Jonathan Milner, you'll be like, oh my god, Zub was not I, exaggerating. I'm gonna have to. Guy. I'm gonna have to go back and check out some videos. And he just wrestles really hard all the time. He makes a ton of mistakes, but he wrestles really hard, and he's a six foot tall, one forty. I, I would, I would love. Th- I will take that any a day, any day of the week. Don't yeah. be afraid to go out and and, and get it. Make mistakes. You know, con- losing conservatively. There's nothing worse. Uh, you know, just watching and even as a coach. I mean, when you're trying not to lose, you're just trying to hang on, and you do lose. It's like, what do you have to lose if you go out and give it hell? And you're the, the end, the end product's going to be the same. You can at least say, you know what? I tried something. hundred percent. Listen, here's the big thing about <laughs> officials. They make mistakes. They're humans. And they're not like the NBA officials. They're not like the major league uh, MLB guys. And they're not like the, they're not like the NFL referees. <laughs> well, you're not retired. Professional well, this year. Referees. I mean, and I mean, how much high level wrestling did they get to see? Right. I mean, as a coach this year, right, Donna, you and I got to see wrestling in the room, maybe not high level, but at the high school level and college level, how much high level wrestling, you know, they didn't get to do the, you know, the scuffle or Midlands or things no, like that, or even at the high school level, he didn't get to do Brexville or Medina. Um, and all of a sudden they're thrusted Iron in. Man. Right. Iron yeah, Man. Yeah, right. Of course. The crown know. jewel of right. wrestling. But you get what I'm saying. Season. And then they're yeah. thrust into these, you know, tight matches uh well, and districts I, and state you know and it, you, they didn't have the reps right i mean it's no it, not that the, easy the, right? you're right jared there's something that goes into that you you uh, as we practice for sport or our athletes those officials you know they have that season of fine competition to timing you know where they need to be um inconsistent on calls you don't get that when you're wrestling five team tri tournaments and it's all area teams and you don't really have some of the best competitors not to take anything away from those kids at those tournaments but let's face it when you get to the state tournaments most of those kids aren't there so or even a national level you know when you're just doing all conference duels uh mm-hmm. the big 10 which yeah, i mean the big 10 obviously is a different brand of its own i mean there's a lot of elite wrestlers there but I mean, some of those refs don't do the Big Ten every weekend. But speaking of officials, I, I'm gonna I want to shout out my boy down at Ashton Crestview. Yeah, um, yeah. Bryce did a nice interview with Hayden Coon. Great um, interview. I told oh, I told you at Cedar Point, man. I, I, and I watched him rough last year, and you know, just the kid the kid does a great job. And uh, Ron Neeset, you know, going back to him, I talked to Ron on Sunday. Ron was floored about how good of an official Hayden Kuhn is at 16 years old. His mechanics Mm -hmm. are better than 99% of the officials that were at that state tournament. And I, I, you know, I I was really shocked that Terry didn't get him for the junior highs the week before, because I I still think he, he can handle his own because the kid, the kid's in great position. I mean, he doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes and that that's, I mean, it's crazy. 16 years old, the kid just comes off third in the state, rough in grade school state. And in my opinion, I think he's the best, if not one of the best there at mm-hmm. that tournament. It's wild. That's impressive. That's Did you really get to impressive. watch him, Zeb? I mean, you're probably not watching. No, the, I, the shitting, tall, skinny but... kid, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 126. Yeah, I saw him a couple of times, actually. I did see him a couple of times. And, you know, there's this, I pay attention. Um, a guy made a really good call in a final for one of Palmer's shout out to Colin Palmer. I don't know what you're going to do with all those trading cards, but <laughs> Palmer had a guy, <laughs> Palmer had a guy in the junior high finals who hit a bow and arrow and the official caught it. And someone is teaching those guys that they're allowed to take the foot to the head and you can't take the foot to the head. Mm-hmm. 
what you can actually get away with and what, what some refs don't pick up on is guys will post the foot on the mat and they'll, they'll cross face the head mm-hmm. towards the foot. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, if you want to get away with it, that's how you, I watch people get away with that. Cause I watch a lot of wrestling. So, and normally talk as what I'm exer- observing in front of me. Right. Um, so I, I saw a ref pick up on it and what it did was the guy was, it was two, two with like 25 seconds left. 20 seconds left. I forget what it was. It was one of Colin's guy, Colin Palmer's guy hit it. So that makes it three to two because he could have rode for overtime. Well, now it's three, two. So, Hey, we're going to put him neutral. He puts him neutral and Palmer's guy ends up winning. Anyway, he hits a slide by and then Merkel's the guy for a two count as time expires. Wow. Great match. Great match. But the ref, I went up to the ref and I was like, Hey man, that was great. You picked up on that. I forget the guy's name. He's a, uh, he looks like a younger guy, but he's like our age. I think he's a pretty good official. I watched him and he was at both weekends this weekend and last weekend. He's buddies with Varney. Um, so he does a pretty good job though. And he, I talked to him like, Hey man, good call on the, uh, the bow and arrow. Cause I think someone's teaching these guys that I don't think they're like, Oh, I see uh, somebody in the big tens doing a bow and arrow foot carry. Oh, foot carry, bow and you're arrow. right. They are, te- they, they are teaching. So somebody's that. teaching it. Yes. Somebody's teaching it. Um, I'm whatever. I'm not neither here nor there to call out who's teaching it. No, but it's, but it's, it's like you put, you push it Chris the envelope Kelly? to see how Chris far Kelly? you go. Is. is it Chris Kelly? No, uh, it's, he's Varney's guy. Yeah. He did a good know. job. I think that's who it is. Yeah. He does a nice job. Do, do you notice him, Jared? I, I don't know. Jared, names. you yeah. hire all the guys. Yeah. Do you probably know him. <laughs> it was his first, it was his first tournament, but yeah. Um, Chris Kelly did a great job. I picked up on it. And I complimented him. I said, Hey man, great, great call on the match. And, and he's like, Oh yeah, you can't go against the spine. I go, yeah, it turns out you can like snap it. And everything. <laughs> yeah. You need it to so walk he, and everything. He, he had a potential, potentially dangerous thins up. No, he, he hit it for a point. Oh, he did. Okay. No, okay. They changed I the match. I mean, almost changed. Okay. Yes. I got you. The guy yeah, was I got you. carrying him. He was, it's okay. A I got you. Jared, were you at the Michigan state duel when the guy did it to me? No, but uh, when we won, we won. Yeah, I, I no, 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 no. I wrestled the number one guy in the country. Uh, yeah, what was his what name? Was his name? Shoot, M- Musashvili. He's a three-time All-American in, at Michigan State. I was a freshman. He was an old guy. I think he was so like he a twenty-six back. or twenty-seven year, twenty-eight like year old. Sean Wentz. Sean Wentz came back. He was older than Sean Wentz, and he was Georgian. He was Georgian. He was, he was from Russia. He was Georgian. And he kept, I had him in a single leg and he kicked me in the chest to get out. (laughs) He bow and arrowed me four times. And at one point, Donnie, you'll enjoy this. My dad and brothers were on the edge of the mat because you're up on a stage. It's still the same setup that they do in the big 10 network. It's up on a stage. Right. Michigan State does it up on the stage in the Genesis. They didn't do it this year, but they do. Yeah. yeah. They put it I don't one think they did it this year. You're right. They, they didn't put it at the, the one end up. of the You're right. House. Yes. You're at one end of the field house they and you put can people still get top three hands or... and then they got this big tarp that they, this divider tarp. And it's like all these Michigan State graphics of Pat McNamara and Gray Maynard and David Morgan and whoever else on it. But my brothers were on the edge of the mat and uh, I think it was Chad Tate and uh, my dad. And they're like, <laughs> You spin yourself. You gotta spin yourself. Pin yourself. And dude, my back was popping and uh, <laughs> pin yourself. And Dave, it's Dave. Dave Dean was the assistant That's coach. Coach, yes. Yeah, Dave. Dave Dean was the big foot carry guy. Mm. Gabe Dean's dad. Dave Dean was yeah. the assistant coach, yeah. and he was the big foot carry guy. They foot mm. carried all of us, dude. Um, Can I tell my story? Oh, Anthony Ruff got his shoulder blown out, but he didn't make it through the match. Gray Maynard kept power half in him, and he, his shoulder kept coming out of out of the joint. They kicked the ever loving tar out of us, and they were really Same good. Move. Then they were really, yeah. really, really, really good. <laughs> just pin just, yourself. Just pin yourself. Just, just pin yourself. Do you I remember when tall. I got <laughs> bow and Aaron at Virginia Duels? Who bow and aired you? So I was win- we were winning, I think the duel against Wisconsin, and I was up in the third period, went down. 
and I I could get out of bottom, get to my feet, and what is it? Is it Tony Black? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I same scenario. I'm just. Didn't he wear a big knee brace? Didn't he wear a big knee uh, brace? Was that him? Uh, what was his brother? His brother, Russell Simmons. Like, but anyway, same situation. I got bow and arrow, and I'm like just looking at you guys on the bench for a minute and a half. Four times? Did you get bow and arrow four times? No, just once, and I just. I lost yeah, mine my was point. four. I got technical, <laughs> but I had to watch. Look at all you guys. I, I guess I'd rather look at you guys than for everybody saying get pinned. <laughs> but I think, oh, we, lost, I think we lost. I think we lost. Ferd wasn't there. He, you know, I mean, he would have been like, "Hey, he get lost pinned, the duel you. though because hey, of get it. pinned. You, you know what? I mean, I don't name every. They I'm were so like, pissed. Just, then Tate, I remember Tate came up to me and he's like, "What are you doing, man? He's like, what are you doing?" And I was like nineteen. I was a freshman. That guy was like twenty six. Dude, he beat me savagely. It was bad. It was that he beat me like a month earlier at the Ashland Open. Similarly, yeah, because we'd wrestle Michigan State Open, Ashland, and they were we'd see him multiple times, right? I mean, this guy, he was a three time All American. Mm -hmm. Um, and that year he lost in the NSA semifinals to Mark Munoz. Hmm, Mark Munoz, the Filipino smashing machine. So, is that his nickname? I think it's something like that. (laughs) He's he's big in the Philippines, actually. Lumpa, Lumpa, whatever. Google it real quick. He's Google got it. like he's he's in a movie. Mark Munoz is like a superhero and Lumpumpor or whatever. Is he it is. as good as Nemes? Oh, God, <laughs> dude, I text him every day. We talk a lot, obviously, and uh, we text a lot. And um, I was so verbally abusive to him when I watched his movie. Mark Munoz, that, most actor. People most people wouldn't be friends with that person anymore. He he likes it though. He loves it. He loves. It. I think he's gonna re up. He's gonna re up. He's up in August. Yeah. And I think they're gonna give him a bunch yeah. of money. You think? To uh, well, what's his name? They're talking. You got a right, Stevenson. Got what it. Who do we got there? Who do we got there? Say hi, Haley. Hi, Haley. So that, How are you? That's the guy that gave you the stickers. Us. That's Mister Zeb. Hi. Can you wave at him? Hi. Say hi, Jared. Hi, Say hi, Hallie. Sarah. Hi, Hallie. Hello. How are you? She, she had to kiss daddy yeah. goodnight. Yeah. That's good. You missed photo. my little one earlier, Donnie. Photo, so photo by me. Night. We like it. We like guys. Like night, that. Hallie. Tell Mr. Zad and, and, Bye, and Mr. Hallie. Jared goodnight. Okay. Good night. I love you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> She's sticking her tongue out. Yeah. We'll grab that thing. Yeah, that's her. She's her father's child. There Filipino, Filipino wrecking machine. The Filipino wrecking wrecking machine. machine. Yeah. What's his thing? Lumpa, Lumpa, Lumpia, Lumpia, Lumpia. Yeah, it, dude. It's like a comic book and a movie, and he's actually a really nice guy. Where he, Mark at? Munoz is a super Lumpia nice guy. with a vengeance. With a vengeance. <laughs> yeah, and so that's a look. It's like a Filipino movie, and his son Trey. I want to say Trey lost in the round of 12 this year for Arizona State. Did you wow. get to see my swag from ASU? Yes, I did see that. Oh, it my it goodness. Up. Donnie. Donnie. Don't be trying to steal my ASU swag, bro. Oh, he's got lose a text or a phone call. Uh-oh. Text or a phone call. Oh, now he's sideways. He's cut wheels again. <laughs> There he is. No, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. No, my uh, the bat, the uh, low battery sign came up. Is that what happened? So I had to. Is that what happened, Donnie? So hey, give me some. I want some names. Are you there? I need some names to go watch. Give me some names of some What's matches that? to go watch. Give me some names of some yeah. matches to go. Watch. Must see matches. Must see matches. Must we see got, matches. Well, that... the first off, the must see interview, right? Yours is must see TV. That's sure, number number one interview. I don't care. Well, what's your favorite interview? That you had the, over the last five Moran, years. Are you joking? Moran? Me? Okay. Moran. That's, yeah, okay. Let's move on. Moran. Okay. Gray Burnett did a great job. Moran. Uh, Shogger. Shogger did a great job. Yeah, his was good. His Shogger was good. did a good job, man. Yeah. And there's, you got to understand, man, those are sixth grade boys. Right. That's an awkward age. That's he tough. plays You're basketball, too. So, I mean, he's he's involved in other sports. I mean, he's. Yeah. I mean, does he football, plays basketball, too. Does basketball. I, I believe yeah, so. Owen Miller played basketball two years ago. So, so what were you asking? Is that just, or just see matches? He did both. What was the favorite final you called? Favorite final for me was these dudes kept ripping each other's heads off. God, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, 
Jared, there were three like out of this world finals that I can't even think of. Um, I'd have to have the names in front of me right now or like bring the matches up junior high or grade school, uh, grade school. Well, then that, that one, that junior high one where the bow and arrow got called. Okay. That was the one fourteen final that grade, that junior high one, the one fourteen junior high final is amazing. And the guy hits a slide by and then he hits a Merkel. He just full send full send. I did see that. I did see it. Now you say that I did see that. Yeah. And the, what's his name? Great call. Great call by the guy who uh I'm guessing it was yeah. Chris Kelly. Yeah, Chris Kelly. He did a good job. And then the kid came back and won the match anyway, even though I mean he put himself there. Right? You had a nim- you had a similar one at divisional, right? There's a he was winning. I think it was a Carver guy, right? Or an old Carver guy wait or something. There was a, a, a illegal locking hands call and he had to kick him and uh, hey, I think he hit him in a five. There was a crazy 11 10 match. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Dude, they were they were throwing bombs back and forth. Like these two of these guys kept lefty headlocking each other. That was incredible. Like, yeah, like there were just some incredible finals, man. I love it. I love watching them. They're great. And they got high level coaching. I can't believe the level of the coaching there too. Yeah. Guys, think about this. I want you guys to think about this. Just, and listen, here's the thing. We conflate great wrestler with great coach. We do that a lot. We, we combine the two. We, we really muddy, muddy the water with that. And some of the greatest coaches, Bill Barger, wasn't a wrestling. He didn't wrestle. Greg Erbis. Let's name two of the greatest coaches in the history of Ohio. Those guys weren't great wrestlers. You know what I mean? Right. But Logan Steber, Brian Dolph, Moran, you see these guys walking around, uh, you know, Colin Palmer. <laughs> yeah. Coach these G, guys, with, Coach G were, was there too, Coach I think, both, G, both weekends. Freaking legend, man. Yeah. The guy put together and orchestrated one of the great, Greatest cheap state championship teams ever in the history of, you know, he derailed St. Edward with a public school, first public school to do it. And I think ever actually to see the coaches Uh, there, man, to see the coaches there is, it is incredible. Obviously Eric and Scotty Burnett are incredible. Like I mentioned earlier, Spatola does a great job. Jermaine Lindsay, you see all these guys, obviously the Delta Delta crew, dude, Don't sleep on Dean Taylor. Dean Taylor knows Mm -hmm. wrestling. Dean Taylor might not look like much, but that cat knows wrestling, man. And then some. Oh, they they always they always reload. And how about Archbold? Archbold. Hey, how about Buckeye? How about Buckeye? I know. Check Cochran. Buckeye. Check check Chester Cochran. Yeah. Try to Edison High School. They they. They've been building that thing for the last four or five years. They've wanted okay, those. They've won D two for a while here. They they always got that. Yeah. yeah but, so Buckeye, and then obviously Jeff Leonard, Guy Seiko, Charlie Agazino. I mean, the West if you are- if you guys want to talk about finals matches, I don't know if either one of you watched it. it was it was uh, grade school right before Cohen Rear's match? The lyric, the little girl who took second. Yeah. Bryce, that got, final, Bryce caught her on an interview too. Yeah. Oh, that final match was Lyricatcher. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a great match. That kid hung on. That kid, the kid avoided the chin whips. Well, I, I will say the official in that match is is one of the is Jose Cervantes from Michigan, which mm-hmm. he was at divisionals. I told you he was a great official, like really good. Is he a he, young kid? Yeah. Young uh, yeah, he's probably 25, 24, yeah, he's 25. Good. Real that guy's short. good. He has, good. Good, he has a good story too. We're going. He, he, he probably, I think he missed two calls in that match that may, may have, I don't necessarily would have, in, the outcome may not have changed, but I think she, she was, she had a takedown and, and a possible uh, two that it didn't, didn't, uh, she didn't get. So He's really good. I mean, that guy yeah, doesn't he, really make mistakes. That guy's pretty good. He's no, good no. Official. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 well, he was at divisionals. I, I told Jared one of the first things when it was over, I said, you have to get these guys for, for grade school and junior high. Cause there was three of them there. Three yeah. We got Michigan. a handful of them and one ended up backing out, but yeah, we, we got him to they, come down. Well, and, him, especially Jose yeah. was really good. I'm like, you got to get this guy. Super. It's, it's Jose he, Cervantes. Yes. 
Yeah, he was on the mat with Hayden all, all week at, at divisionals. And I'm just thinking, God, these guys are – he had a 16 year old kid and a 23 year old kid out here, yeah. just phenomenal. But they're both and, and really he, good. He told me a story about how, you know, starting out, he just, you know, they kind of fed him to the wolves and almost tried to make him quit, you know, when he started officiating. He just That's was weird. persistent with it. That's weird. And he finally connected with the right mentor and it just, he stuck with it. Now he's learning and, you know, getting better. But those first three years were rough. And, it, it, and he's good. He's really good. Well, I just, think. just if you watch him, when a coach will take him to the table, how, Yes. Let his demeanor does not change. He's calm the whole yes. time. Even off he, the mat. Like, yep, he owns, it. He owns yeah. it. You're never going to rattle him. He just, mm -hmm. he, he'll flat out tell the coach. He's like, look, it's, if you respect me, I'm going to respect you. I'm going to listen to you. If you're not going to respect me, it's not going to go well for you. And you have to appreciate that. He stands his ground. Not, no, nobody's going to sway the way he officiates. He's, hey, yeah. Jared, can you open your email real quick? Because yeah. I want to just check your email real quick. Do you know how to share your screen? Because I want to show Donnie this if we can. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 jump off the ledge a little bit here. Not really close to getting in here. Rhodes takes a look at the clock. There's Rhodes. And Rhodes gonna stall to get 10 seconds left. He's in on a single and stream. Oh, Freeman two! He gets it! Freeman take down! There it is! They don't call it! Oh my goodness! Oh, 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 my goodness. That's two all the way. Oh, my God. Rhodes gets absolutely bailed out by the official. Oh, my God. Oh, no, the, one of the worst no calls I've seen in a long time. Wow. So here, here's what the – here is what – so Freeman – it's Freeman from Brighton. And what their explanation was and what their, what their. Well, preface this, right. That was the whole thing at Ironman, right? It was the a thing couple at months. Ironman. That was and, the, and, at the and, thing, right? Izzy Martinez comes up to I me. Mean, you guys know Izzy's yeah. John Jones's he's John Jones's wrestling coach. Yeah. He's the head. He was the head coach at Montini. He's not anymore. Easy Martinez comes up at me and he, hey, I gotta talk to you. And he's got that I, scratchy voice. I think Drew wrestled. I think Drew wrestled him one year. They're about the same age, right? Yeah, he's he's the same age as Drew. Yeah, they wrestled at TOC. I could be wrong. I wrestled his older yes, brother. Yes, that's correct. That is yeah. who that is. Yes, yeah. him and Drew are about the same age. Dude, he is on me. He is just like, what did he do? I have a special new name, and I'm right? like, is he? Dude, just out of his mind. Because they weren't calling that at the Iron Man. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, listen, man, you got to call that. Now, the thing that they could have, what they actually could have said was, and he didn't even have a view of it. Rhodes had just like the super shallow wizard, right? Which he didn't even have any bite on, right? He had a wrist which, in there. That was about it. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. So what they said is someone, of uh, someone, told them a higher up and it wasn't toby dunlap because toby dunlap i called him i'm like toby we got change. this is bad man and you had to be locked at or above the knees that was their interpretation of it that was criteria for a takedown i said toby this has been a takedown forever in the state of ohio right and then the other thing was their interpretation was you could do a shoelace takedown on the edge. So like I got into it and I was like, I, it was egregious, right? That was a, well, you just saw it's clearly a takedown. Yes. What's your gut, right? Yeah. Clearly. But, I mean, you clearly. 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 you're off your rocker. Sure, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I, don't, it was two. Right. Two. I gave two. Yeah, two. Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. It's two all day. So, and, and I don't want to be like my, <laughs> well, you can see brother, he wanted brother. to give two. He yeah. He was about, do two yeah. right and then he was like oh yeah that and that popped in the back of his head of, oh, oh, oh gotta be above, oh, gotta be the, knee. above the knee at or above the knee which right. is like no you're controlling a guy when you have a mid shin trust your gut what is control right yeah we know what control is but then the the waters got muddied right because they they made this like they tried to make it harder than it is it was bizarre and i was like who did that and Toby was like, and that's the problem with officiating. Half the time we don't know what we're supposed to be calling because it changes so much. Yeah. And that was, <laughs> that yeah. And, and that the rules are simplified, is, if anything. Yes. Oh, yeah. If anything, well, no, if you want to draw more people into understanding mm -hmm. what control is or what a takedown is or 
what is what, you make it easier. You dumb it down. What is inbounds? What's out of bounds? Sure, right? It's pretty. It's pretty apparent what the out of bounds is, right? Right. Yeah. And it was maddening to me. I was like, ah. And then you can see the thing's been watched one hundred thirteen thousand times. But I was just like, well, it's true. So they changed though. the I mean, rule, though, right? And the, and the guy changed the rule. Yeah, they changed, they changed the fixed rule. It. So they fixed it. That, that's well, why you're bringing rule. it up, right? Yeah. Well, and, and the thing yes. is, like, it was because it's, you're controlling that person. And regardless of the fact them. if you're above the knee or not, the guy, he was not able, he couldn't improve his position to defend. No. He was so posting on top of it, too. He's posting. Yeah, All his too. weight was on his hands. That's the other thing. Because that's the other that's big thing. When you day. tip his weight onto his hands, that's another criteria that they. So Sasso they, was Sasso too. Um, fifty fifty. Yeah. I mean, if I'm I, an Ohio State fan, ah, Homer all day, yes, do. But he he barely had the shoelaces covered. If you look at it, because they did a still of it. Right. Well, here, here's my take on that. Just he ain't gonna lose that match one, next year. Yeah, well, I'll tell you that well, right now. Sammy Sasso ain't losing that match next year. Well, here, here's the thing: you're up one nothing, and you know you got riding time. And for the last forty seconds, he was he wasn't he wasn't aggressive. He was he was moonwalking. So listen, you still got forty seconds left to wrestle. Be a, you know get after it like the wrestler you are. You give that takedown up because you're not being aggressive. So I don't. I mean, I didn't think it was two. I, I mean, and I'm an Ohio State fan. I didn't really think it was two. And you're about as big as Ohio State fan that, there is, right? Up, yeah, and if you cut, hey, listen, when you place your hands in the ref, uh, in, the, in the hands of a ref for a judgment call, shame on you. You had 40 seconds to wrestle your ass off to win that match and not get taken down. And guess what? You didn't do it, so you didn't deserve to win a national championship. As my wife says, you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, he got what he got because what you, you literally just said how he man, mismanaged the match. Yeah. He wrestled not so And that guy's a freak. That guy's a freak. There's no way he should lose that match, but shout nope. out to AOC. AOC got the job done and, and wrestled yep. harder in that, in that final. Congrats to Coleman Scott and, and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Yeah. yeah. And, and credit to him, but Sasso is really good, man. He is yes. really good, and we're going to see him three more years, right? Yeah, hopefully at least two. He, and I don't think anybody should contend or challenge him, which brings up a good point. I mean, how many of these birds you think are going to come back for another year of punishment? I mean, you guys both are college wrestlers, and you know what the hell that does to your body. But some of these guys who I've been there five years want to come back for six. That's insane. All the North Carolina State guys. I seen Hayden Tariq's Hadley's coming going back. to 74. Tariq Wilson's going to 49. Bullard's coming back. All the all the NC State guys are coming back. Renan's coming back. All the NC State guys are coming back. Dude, Papalicia knows he's a winner. <laughs> he's a winner. And and I think when you build a championship culture like that, they all want to come back. I think Marinelli's coming back. At, uh, I know Ironman's coming back. Yeah, I keep seeing them. I keep seeing the things pop There's up. There's going to be some fireworks next year. There'll oh, be some good man. matches at the NCAAs. Let's hope. Let's hope. Think about it's it. going to be incredible, dude. You I know what's sad, though? Well, the saddest thing is uh, Spencer Lee, man. Yeah. Spencer Lee I know. The Olympic trials. I think he would have won the – he's a medalist in Tokyo, in my opinion. Well, now in Suriano now, too. Oh. Yeah, geez, oh, Pete. Now, I think what's going to happen there is – we could see a don't don't rule on that one yet, because we could a, see a false positive or, a, and the only way the only people who are allowed to request a later wrestle off date are the 2019 medalists. Gotcha. So Burroughs, Taylor didn't wrestle in 2019. He won 2018. So Burroughs, Jaden, uh. Anybody who's 2019, so just those two off the top of my head, Snyder, mm-hmm. they can request a later Russell off date. Those are the only ones. Who, who the, wins the, between the Snyder and Cox, Seb? Two out of three? Oh, man. I'm going Jaden Cox all I, yeah. day. 
I yeah, yeah. But man, it's so hard for me to bet against Kyle Snyder, man. <laughs> and Donnie's out like that. He's so good, Donnie. Mike drop, Donnie. <laughs> Done. K <Case> <laughs> Snyder. <laughs> uh, Donezo. Yeah, that's funny. That was good, <laughs> even though it's probably just something he just his phone probably had. <laughs> oh, that's good, Jared. What that's... else? What else did we? Uh, did we? Nothing, use? man. What do you have next? I guess. What What's next on? Uh, Hopefully June fifth. <laughs> June fifth. Yeah. Hopefully right. June fifth. I might go over to uh, Pittsburgh Wrestling Classic with Eric Burnett, but on Friday. But it's impromptu. Right. And and uh, watch. He's gonna coach Mungia. So, Patty. Whoever was going to wrestle Patty pulled out, so Patty's not going to wrestle. And uh, Mungia, I think, fills in for Patty is what, what's going to happen. Is that the plan? That, yeah, I think that's what happened. And um, uh, I may hit up K-Rob, Kevin Roberts, okay. between here and there. And go Who are you going out there camps. with? Who are you going out there with? I'm trying to get Scotty to go out, but I'll probably do yeah. something Burnett between here and there. Do, and- do you, do you Just you and Scotty or – a Greg, the Greg, I'll come. Greg, yes. I'll come. And it's his birthday. Shout out. Happy yeah, birthday, Greg. Greg. Guy. Happy birthday. Is he 13? I don't know how old I didn't. I think he's 13. Greg, guy's 13. Okay, happy birthday, Greg. Guy. Two titles in a row, two weekends in a row. Hey, Jared, what? So we got, we got Feister and we got Greg, guy who just did it. How many other people? Yeah, I, if you don't have it in front of you, but that's a rare thing. Yeah. Oh, for 100%. When OHC, Sixth grade, sixth grade, division four, and then when OAC junior high, sixth grade, it's we don't have a lot of sixth grade champions no. to begin with in junior high. No. Who are our three time champs? Colin Palmer, Lance, or who is it? Who are they? Oh, I have to pull up the top of my head. Um, here we go. All right, Those so Twitter, EG, Colin Palmer, Taylor. Steber, Phillips, Fleep. You got to call his matches, right? Yep. Kladzik, Maddox, and Skinner. And going down to the two timers here. Jaggers, Doggett, Roller, Nemec, Palmer, the other Kladzik, Jamie Clark, man. A lot of people forget about him, I feel like. I mean, because he was right in that era with Hunter Steber. Yeah. The Manila uh, Habit. Got- yeah, look at habit. You can zoom in on that. It's 132. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. A lot of people forget Jared Cortez. I'm right. He ended up with, uh, in Chicago. Bojo. He, he I called yeah. Bojo's final match. Yeah. Jojo Tace, Gunner Lay, Thornberry, Cameron Kelly, Austin Myers. The Bull. He's coming back. That's crazy. Alex Marinelli, Jack Harris, Spies. What a great story with Spies. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Mitch Moore made the blood run. Caleb Romero. Mitch Moore, yeah. Jordan Crace, freak of nature, dude. Really good. Connor Brady, really good. Qualified for Virginia Tech this year. Tag, I think he just is transferring to Cater. Elon Hurd. Elon Hurd beat uh, Nate Burnett in the finals. The semifinals this year. No, no. His brother did. Yeah, say so wasn't him, right? Manzona Bryant. Look at that he's doing a backflip. That's cool. Snodgrass is a freak. He's really good. Padilla, Peyton Keller, Marlon Yarbrough, and I don't know Paul Haywood. And this is we're missing the two nineteens at twenty nineteen. So that's pretty cool graphics yeah. that you put together there. Yeah, something. So. Good stuff, Jared. So, anyways, yeah. No, I'm looking forward to see what you have next. Olympic team trials this weekend. And um, I got to dig up that George Berman we did about a month ago. It feels good to sit back and talk like this. And I, we got to see each other, but it feels good to just sit here and, and chat it up, man. So anything else you have? I'm good to go. Good to go. My guy, Josh. All right. Taking care of us. What is the, uh, what is it? Uh, www.barbarianapparel.com backslash BA hour, BA hour, right? Yep. Check Might it out. Sing, singlet, uh, singlet deals. Yeah. We got, uh, got, uh, man, I sh- should have some of this stuff here. You get the gators for us this past weekend. I think you end up getting one at divisional, but I think the, the subtle always see it's hard to see in there, but 
Yeah, I'm trying to find. Oop, I got these. I ordered more of these today. Nice. Barbarian so. hour. Got those. Got to start giving those out. I got the clears. Ooh, mm -hmm. hey, by the way, these are smooth. Oh, you like that, huh? It's pretty smooth. That's look, smooth. Look at look at here. Look at look at this one. Did our logo. Yeah. A little coaster action, huh? Oh, coaster action. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> I'm not done with you yet. Boom. That's that's on the dark uh the walnut. It's on the yeah, walnut pretty wood, cool. man. Pretty cool. here, here it is on the draft wood. Oh, I like the that's draft. Nice. Wood. That's nice. That's Sweet. nice. I got to show you some videos. Uh, pulled down like four trees tonight. One of them like kind of like quasi fell Ooh. on the four wheeler, but oh, they're like shit. little little like uh, plum trees. So what, just in your like, backyard, or were you doing neighbor? Yeah, stuff my or? backyard. No, neighbor stuff was the other day. We did some man stuff. Bob and I. He's like, hey, I need your help. Uh, he's super chill. Hey, I need your help uh, cutting the tree down. Was it from all those high winds the other day? Or what? No, he, you gotta understand me. We have hundreds of trees, right? Someone's like, I can't believe you still have trees. I have, yeah, I got hundreds more. Trust me. You're not soft. getting any small woods. It's a right. thick, dense woods. Um, so uh, you gotta clear the dead and diseased. And we have, man, I got a couple hundred ash trees, and the ash borer just decimated my backwoods. And you know, you gotta clear them so the 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 saplings can take over, right? And then they'll fall, they'll kill other trees and they'll break them. And so I've been doing that a lot, you know, just removing trees and man, I got a 40 volt Ryobi chainsaw. It is I bet, I know. murder. Who mentioned, somebody mentioned that on Twitter. Today. The battery. Well, someone's right? like, that's an electric chain. Oh, Matt Stencil called me Sorry. out. Goes, Are you using an electric chainsaw? And I was like, Matt, I would never use an electric chainsaw <laughs> because I wouldn't, because that means you have to have it plugged in. <laughs> I will use a battery chainsaw, a battery powered, but the power, Jared, the power of my 40 volt, it is as powerful as a gas chainsaw. Dude, it is, it is, there is I believe no, it, there is no performance issue whatsoever, but, and something happened because I must've been cutting really hard wood with it to start it the batteries are lasting a lot longer or i was doing out in the winter so the cold damn yeah. the cold might affect the bat i don't know what it is but man the batteries are lasting they're lasting two or three times as long as they were when i was using it in the winter so yeah, and i'm cutting cold. like a lot of rotten punky wood too so that probably has something to do with it too but bob my neighbor bob was like I, yeah, yeah that, that that thing's pretty good you know he was cool about it <laughs> bob's a good dude he was like there when you're opening your gear from Arizona State. Yeah, he just rolled up. Hey, I got some. Uh, he came over to give me goodie snack bags for my kids. The guy just good neighbor. Hit the huh? neighbor lottery, buddy. That's that's it. Can't control that one, right? That's good. No, but that's it's good. amazing. Yeah, when you good hit when it, you get it. When you hit it, and you you get Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For, sh for show. For show. Dude, look at these old guys. Whoa. Those are those Whoa. are bonkers. probably twenty years old, right? At least 20 Nine years, years old. old. At least 10. What? I think those were there when we were there, weren't they? No, 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 no. I had They're... these made. Had okay. These made. But there were some that were. This we dude those. This dude owns a sticker company in California, and he wrestled for Oregon State, Garrett Drucker. Oh, yes. He they made, made the Oregon those. State ones. I remember that. Yep. yep. That was, that was them. 10 yep. plus. Yep. Those are 0809. Probably 12. Yeah. 12 years old, 13 years old. Yeah, you're right. Um, have I ever showed you my damn mug? With the Keck visit? It was that visit, actually. Oh, man. You got to pull up that video. Send me that. I think yeah, that's worth yeah, a share. Yeah, it's worth a share. Right? You're, right? you're right. It's worth a share. So, all right. All I'm right, going to go Xander. in. Uh, how, about I, how about I still got, like, uh, wood chips on there? <laughs> wood chip. Wood chips. Wood chips. Uh, look, wood chips. Not surprised. Not surprised. Dude, I was cutting wood, and literally, I was like, oh, no. I got to get in and get going. I'll send you the video. Me pulling these trees out. It was actually pretty good. Send it over, man. So, all, all right. right. I'm a man. Conquer the impossible. Conquer it up. See ya. BA hour, www.barbarianapparel.com backslash BA hour. Go buy some stuff. The stuff's available. You can get this on the store, by the way. Right. You can get it. Peace. Take care of my man, Josh. Peace out.